In addition to the great wealth of fossil evidence used to explain the Earth's turbulent history, geological evidence provides a similar account. The study of geology has revealed the Earth once contained several variations of a giant supercontinent, the most famous of them being Pangaea. Over billions of years of slow-moving, plate tectonic, and violent volcanic activity, this landmass shifted, changed, and broke apart, resulting in the continents as they look today. Similar to the debate on a dinosaur-human coexistence, it is difficult to place the theory of continental drift into a biblical context. An important discrepancy is what can be said for the timeline of continental drift and the distribution of animal life in relation to the flood. After the flood waters receded, the animals distributed themselves around the globe from a single point within Mesopotamia, where Noah's Ark came to rest on top of Mount Ararat. If the earth appeared at the time of Noah as it does today, there is no way to account for how specific animals allocated themselves to isolated continents or islands. For example, how did all 14 species of marsupials choose to migrate together from Mesopotamia to the Australian continent, which to this day remains the only original habitat on earth these animals can be naturally found? Another important discrepancy arises if we assume the earth appeared in Noah's time as it does today. Genesis 7 tells us every mountain on the earth was totally covered by water. However, the highest peak is Mount Everest at 29,035 feet above sea level. If we consider the earth to have been created in its present form, it would be impossible for water to have surrounded the entire planet at a depth of five miles above sea level. If it was a global flood, at the very least Mount Everest would have been exposed, which contradicts the Bible. On the other hand, Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 may suggest there was only one landmass in the beginning. If Pangaea broke up after the flood, it could account for the proper distribution of animal species, as well as require a much lower level of water to cover the earth, since the Himalayas were produced from the collision of India with the Asian continent. However, large discrepancies arise if we were to believe Pangaea broke up after the flood. From our investigation of the biblical genealogies in episode 2, the after creation timeline places the flood in 2237 BC. This date, along with many other factors, demonstrate overwhelming evidence to disprove the occurrence of a global flood event. There were many great Mesopotamian societies established well before the flood. The known ages the Akkadian, Minoan, Egyptian, and Sumerian empire spanned is proof enough the flood did not occur, for these societies would have been abruptly destroyed in or around the year 2237 BC. In addition, if there really was a worldwide flood, as Genesis claims, China's 5,000 year history would not have gone uninterrupted. With a great deal of astronomical, environmental, and socio-economic record keeping done by the Egyptians and other ancient cultures, there would have been documentation of the rapid plate tectonic shifting needed to occur in the minimal amount of time offered by the Bible. We observe great destruction to civilization when tectonic plates move against each other, either causing earthquakes when the plates shift on land, or tsunamis when they shift in the oceans. However, we still find ancient monuments like the pyramids that have remained unscathed from any such massive natural disaster, nor do we find written record of continuous earthquakes and tsunamis from any ancient civilization, which suggests the earth at the time of these civilizations must have looked as it does today. But even more striking is the mention of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers by name as far back as the second chapter in the book of Genesis. Therefore, the authors of Genesis assumed the earth was created in its present form and allows no leeway for the existence of Pangaea or the mechanisms of plate tectonics to have occurred. Although the scenario of Pangaea breaking up after the flood accounts for animal distribution and a lower level of water required to cover the earth, it would be utterly impossible for the process of continental drift to have commenced during the time of Noah. The study of geology has revealed tectonic plates move very slowly, about 2 to 18 centimeters per year. At this rate, it would take 100 million years to form an ocean basin or a mountain range. Finally, the most convincing evidence the Earth and the universe are older than 6,000 years is the fact we may observe starlight with powerful telescopes like Hubble that has been emitted from galaxies many billions of light years away. A light year is defined as the distance light travels in a vacuum in one Julian year. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second, or 671 million miles per hour, which would be 5.87 trillion miles in one year. Astronomers use this value to calculate distances in space. For instance, our next closest star is 25.8 trillion miles away, or 4.37 light years. The next closest spiral galaxy is Andromeda, 2 million light years away. And the most distant galaxy ever observed is 13 billion light years away. In fact, looking at the night sky is like looking back in time. 
for if you were able to instantaneously travel to a distant location in space, it may look a lot different than in your telescope. For example, a supernova occurring 100 million light years away would have already dissipated by the time the light of this explosion has reached the Earth and becomes visible to our eyes. Creationists often try to muddle science when attempting to refute scientific topics, such as the rates of sediment deposition or how fossils are dated. However, when presented with the astronomical evidence, they go running to find answers in their religious text, usually offering up some half-baked response like, in the beginning God stretched the heavens in order to account for why we should see starlight that has traveled billions of years to reach the earth. In fact, this cop-out used to explain the astronomical evidence is much like the excuses given to explain away the formation of petroleum and diamonds. If creationists wish to dabble in the realm of science, then they must be held accountable to use science in all aspects of their claims. But this is the key difference between the theory of intelligent design and every other scientific theory. Because if the evidence does not fit within a particular scientific theory, the theory must change or be discarded. However, creationists can never discard their theory, nor can it ever be modified. So instead, it is the evidence that must change. Therefore, if intelligent design were treated like a real scientific theory, it would have been abandoned long ago, never for an instant considered viable enough to be taught to anyone, let alone in our school system. In making the presumptuous claim water could have covered the entire surface of the earth, it is clear that biblical authors did not comprehend the elevation of the highest peak, the great distribution and variety of animal species, the distances that separate the seven continents, or the processes by which geological phenomena are created. Today, even grade school children are taught about plate tectonics and the mechanisms of continental drift, information the authors of major biblical events such as the creation and the flood had no way of obtaining. For these reasons, when we compare the biblical accounts to the great wealth of knowledge we have accumulated about the world, these stories easily crumble under the slightest scrutiny.